Hey guys and welcome. Today I'd like to do something a little bit different. Tonight we're just going to be playing an adventure. This is an adventure that was recommended to me during my live streams a couple weeks ago. Until the last one falls by the rest. And I apologise if I butchered your name there. But this adventure guys is absolutely incredible. Not just for the storyline alone. The storyline is absolutely brilliant. But also for the... For the environment, for the characters, for all of the lore and, you know, a bit of information in the background. And to me, the most incredible part is the cutscenes, which is something that Sport just does not have. You cannot make cutscenes in this game. And yet, creators like HR Matthews managed to figure out how. Derez has taken it to, you know, the absolute next level. It is incredible, guys. And I really just wanted to share this with everyone. So guys, sit back, relax. And let's enjoy this wonderful story. You are Quidim, a former mercenary working aboard a hostile space station of benevolence. You were asleep in your private quarters when you were awakened by a reoccurring nightmare. And when you have this as the very first environment that you spawn into, yeah, you know that this is going to be quite an uh, incredible adventure. Just so you guys know, I'm going to start with reading a lot of the you know, background information, so a lot of little tidbits here and there. I'll primarily be doing it before and in between the actual acts, so I would recommend watching as much as you can as well as listening. Starting with this wanted poster over here. A wanted poster that was issued for me a decade ago while I was at the height of my infamy. I was once a target everywhere I went, wanted by empires both for my successful work as a mercenary and for their own more sinister reasons. Most alien governments were more interested in dissecting me than hiring me. It wasn't until I uncovered my forgotten origins as a Milani bioengineered creature that I understood why I had so many enemies. I dedicated the last several decades of my life to tracking down and killing those who hunted me and am now nothing more than a tall tale known only to a few. A collection of some of the finest literature in the galaxy, a very little of which I've actually read from these books. Having only two fingers makes reading physical books nearly impossible. The only reason I held onto this collection was its value to me personally, as I took these books from a mobster who was, found, who was particularly fond of this collection. A spode shrine I took from a crime lord at Den to go. A spode shrine I took from a crime lord's den ages ago. I don't know why I've held on to it for all of these years. I've never been much of a believer in spode. This is probably what's responsible for that weird dream I had last night. I shouldn't have eaten right before going to bed. I had invited that girl who works on the second level over for dinner last night, but she cancelled on me at the last minute. I can't say I blame her, knowing she has a three-year-old son to worry about, and her husband was killed in active duty only a year ago. Still, at least I tried. A model of the Hospital Space Station Benevolence, the same station I'm currently aboard. The station was originally created by a coalition of empires as a means of bringing them together, as an advanced medical station that could take the forefront of practice and research. Eventually, a controversy arose among the empires regarding the aliens being treated at the station, eventually resulting in the hospital station declaring itself an independent property. An antique map, the Haruki planet of Voltev, I took from a killer with a penchant for historical artifacts years ago. I've never had it appraised, but its former owner seemed to believe it was worth a fortune. Ironically, it's one of the few items I've taken from my defeated foes that I can safely display in my quarters. Just another dusty reminder of the life I led behind. And as this television here says, Hey there player, it's me, Derezd. I just wanted to let you know a little bit more about the adventure that you're currently playing, so you can get the most out of your playthrough. Until the last one falls, it's a very loose continuation of an old adventure series I made a long time ago, but never completed. But don't worry if you haven't played it though. Until the last one falls, it's only loosely inspired by the two early adventures, but playing them could give you a better idea of the backstory that's touched on, touched on in this adventure. 
completing the goals in order in Until the Last One Balls is very important for the story to make sense. Due to some limitations with the complexity meter, the minimap isn't always accurate. When in doubt, head to the quest marker nearest to you. Also, be sure to read the active descriptions. Well, that's all for now. I'll let you get back to playing the adventure. Now, I do believe that is everything in here explored. You awaken in a cold search from a recurring nightmare. So, let's continue with the adventure itself. And here's one of the very first cutscenes. The rest presents until the last one falls. You are Quinnum, a mercenary with an origin shrouded in mystery. You are not a member of any alien race, but a bioengineered species created by a now extinct species known as the Milani. You have lived much of your life on the run, having no knowledge of your origin or your creators, as an unknown event robbed you of your earliest memories. The Milani were a brilliant race, making any remnants of their creations invaluable to the minds of the galaxy. Your one such creation, and as such, have been hunted for most of your life. After being exploited for your talents by gangsters and crime lords, you finally chose to take the fight to your enemies and let the hunters become the hunted. Now, nearly a century later, you're working aboard a space station Benevolent when you're awakened in the middle of the night by a reoccurring nightmare. I had another nightmare about the Milani. The galaxy might have forgotten about them, but I never can. They will, they will always hold my mind in forms of fragmented memories and nightmares. For as long as I can remember, I've always been on the run from someone. It took me decades to find some relative comfort. And due to my unique status, I was only able to find work as a mercenary. Today, I work aboard a hospital space station Benevolent, where I lend my combat experience to train security members, something I have plenty of experience in as a former mercenary. Years ago, I inadvertently allowed my natural talents to be exploited by several crime lords before I severed ties with that life and turned the tables on those who hunted me. As I reflect on these thoughts, I'm jolted back to the present by an explosion from the hallway outside my quarters. I need to investigate the cause, or possibly even evacuate the station. Warning! Primary power low. The power must be too low for the door to open properly. A good blow ought to force it open. Make sure you've examined all the objects in the room before you leave. Where is everyone? I must have been asleep on the sound of the evacuation alarm. I need to get to the escape pods fast. And while we're running guys, I have to hand it to the rest. All of that just for an intro. The elevator just exploded. I'm lucky that didn't kill me. Come on, this is the last escape pod. We need to go. No time to talk. We need to get out of here. We'll talk when it's safe and just get in the pod. I just want to say, if anyone missed that loading into this cutscene, seriously, go rewind it. The third mate scrambles into the escape pod behind you, and the door seals with a resounding clang. Go! He screams as you furiously punch the launch button. You feel the sudden heat from the space station exploding behind you as the pod is shot into the vacuum of space. The survivors sit in a numb silence as the pod nears the planet, deserts and valleys becoming visible after you pass through the atmosphere. You see green grasslands, you pass over them. You pass over an endless desert as a pod loses momentum. That is where you land. The impact pounds in your head and you bite your tongue, drawing blood. You hear the heat from the pod hissing outside. The other survivors clamp out one by one. You sit in the pod after they climbed out, still trying to make sense of what has just happened. I can't believe I just survived that. A minute later and I would have been dead. Yeah, I 
I wonder what kind of animals those are on the horizon. I talk to Kiati and then follow the plumes of smoke in the distance to find the other survivors. After you talk to the other survivors, move to the derelict radio tower and speak to Malets. Third officer Malets says, Sorry there wasn't time for explanations back on the station. I'm Malets. I am, or rather, I was, the third mate on the Benevolence. Chapan says, Unu nal manda tabasa se nu mibinta su. Sorry, I don't know what you're saying. Tenhin atata mibinta egu. Your language? I don't speak it. Najema ta dene. Right. <laughs> We're really lucky that we survived that. I'm Kiati, one time pirate, and up until 10 minutes ago, I was recovering from a spinal injury at the Benevolence Space Station. I can't believe the entire station was destroyed so quickly. Who were the attackers? I never caught sight of any ships. There weren't any ships. Our attackers were here on the planet. They must have been hitting us with some kind of long-range cannon. If there are other survivors, we need to find them. The report said this planet was abandoned. I guess they were wrong. Any idea where any other escape pods might, might have landed? I didn't get a clear view of them on the way down. I think I saw at least one of the other escape pods close by, maybe two. You could probably see the plumes of smoke from here. Just follow the clouds, it should lead you right to any survivors. Just follow the clouds of smoke, they'll lead you to any crash escape pods. Hopefully there are other survivors. I'm going to stay here and help the third mate salvage anything we can from the escape pod. And there in the distance, next to the smoke cloud, is the second escape pod. With the navigator hillock. Zat and Zat again. Another survivor! They're glad to see we weren't the only survivors. I'm the navigator of the station Benevolence, God rest her soul. We had a bit of a rough landing, but we're alive. No idea who attacked us though. You're the navigator. Lucky for us you survived then. Who attacked the hospital station? Also, I thought the planet was deserted because of an epidemic or something. Yeah, it was. We're on Grish. It was once an attempted Severian colony. They abandoned it after a disease wiped it out. We weren't even supposed to be orbiting this rock. While traveling through hyperspace, we had to alter our course to bypass a nebula. This is one of those planets that we stopped to make a jump at. When we came out of hyperspace, we were attacked. I hope there's some Sebastian technology left behind that we can use to send an emergency signal off-world, because nobody knows where we are. Let's hope that that's not the case. I wonder if that radio tower over there is still functioning. I saw the third mate head over there a minute ago. You should go see if you found anything. Go ahead without us. We're going to get out, get our gear out of our pod before we head over there. Oh no, this is bad, bad, bad. Even if I can get this old equipment to work, it doesn't have what we need. What do you mean? This is an off-planet communication setup, right? It is, but it only transmits regular radio waves. There is no faster light communication. 
Even if I can get it working, it's going to take be a long time before anyone hears our message. How long? The nearest inhabited system is 32 light years away. That's as soon as they can receive a message. I guess the best we can hope for is someone to come looking for us in the meantime. No, Meles, nobody will be looking for us. No one knows we're here. We went way off course and move around a nebula. Go ahead and fix that radio equipment. We're going to be here for a long time. 32 years. That's a lifetime for some of the survivors. We're going to need food, shelter, the list goes on. I guess we'd better give the others bad news. I'll tell them. Four years have passed. I talk to Kiati, then follow the main trail and look for survivors while defending yourself from any enemies you may find along the way. Hmm. Four years have passed since the hospital space station Benevolence was destroyed while orbiting a forgotten planet of Raish. We have spent the last several years tracking down as many survivors as we can as some of the escape pods that left the station ended up hundreds of miles from our own. Our assailants' intentions elude us at every turn, leaving us to guess what their motivation was for shooting down a hospital space station and why they were on this planet. Today, you awake after a night of desperately looking for a group you had been tracking for days. You weren't the only one looking for them. Eventually, you were forced to return to camp. Now, you plan your next move with the other members of the group. Hey, glad to see you're finally awake. I know we spent almost all night trying to track down that band of survivors, but we need to get back out of here. If we want to find that survivor band before our enemies do, we're going to need to split up these groups. We might already be too late. We found a couple of them dead last night. I'm hoping that's not the case. I'm taking a group to cover the east trails, which leads the north trails to you. I'd come with you to watch your back, but a lot of these guys aren't fighters. Don't worry, I've got it covered. Besides, I'm one of the few of us who is armed. Maybe one of us will get lucky and find their camp if we can't find the survivors. I don't think we'll find it. We've been looking for the camp for years and still no luck. Good luck to you though, and watch your back, both on the wild animals and the crazed murderers. Do you guys even hear a word I said? <laughs> A dead survivor with a wild Chiani next to it. Looks like the corpse of one of the survivors. Another dead survivor or two. Aside from their weapons, it appears these pirates have very little of value in these worn out dwellings. It would appear they have been stranded here for a very long time, maybe several decades. Whether they came here of their own volition is unclear, but it is apparent that they were unable to leave once they arrived and had little equipment with them. Their gear appears to have been salvaged from various shipwrecks, all of which they probably shot down themselves. Maybe they shot us down for supplies, but they also may have been hoping to acquire a ship ship by forcing us to land. Imagine their shock when they realised they destroyed an entire space station. That's one of them! It looks like a massacre. 
If there were any survivors, they aren't here in this compound. This gun is huge. It might even be one of the ones that shot us down four years ago. You don't look like those other guys. Are you a survivor from the station too? I'm Thelwyn. This is my little sister. She doesn't have a name. My mum died this morning after having her. My name's Quinnim. I'm a survivor just like you. Don't worry. You and your little sister are safe now. What? What was your mother's first name? Was it Alea, by any chance? How do you know her name? Did you know my mother? A little. I invited her over for dinner once, back on the station. How... How about we call your sister Alea? Hey, that's a great idea! Oh, I almost forgot. The guy over there is Mr. Davin. He's really sad right now because everyone died and keeps punching things. But he's usually really nice. Alright, Thoen. Let me go check on Davin and see how he's doing. And then we can see about getting you guys back to the camp. How did I let this happen? I let them down. It was my job to protect these families, and now they're dead because they trusted me to keep them alive. I thought if I can get them here, then we'd be safe. It's okay. You're with us now. We've been looking for you, for any survivors at all, for a very long time. What did you... Why did you want to come here? What is so special about this place? Look on the horizon. See that? It's a city called Sivli. It's home to a military base that was built by my race before the planet was deserted. It can be defended. That city is the future. Even if you have a guarded camp, you're not going to be able to protect the people forever. We can defend that city. If we don't get dug in, we aren't going to live long enough to see rescue. I think you're right. It's going to be no small task to take it, though so it might be the closest thing to civilization we'll ever get on this world. For that, for today, let's get you guys back to camp. Eleven more years have passed. Head towards the city and talk to Thoen, uh. then enter the tent behind him and speak with Kiati. Mm. After you've done that, you'll need to interrogate the captive. Eleven more years have passed. We have now been stranded on British for 15 years. In that time, we have all but wiped out the pirates that shut us down and established a settlement inside the ruins of a city. We found dozens of survivors from the destruction of the Benevolent in the past decade, more than enough to populate our new home. It has been almost a year since we have encountered any hostiles, giving us our first period of relative peace. Today I am out hunting. The first time I've been able to do so in several years. Despite all of this, I've never been able to shake that feeling of being getting too comfortable. <laughs> hey Quinnim, we have an emergency back at camp. What's going on, Melis? One of our patrols was attacked on their way to town, and it wasn't by pirates or wild animals this time. They were heavily armed and didn't belong to any race of aliens we recognised. There were only four of them, but it was a massacre. Fourteen of our men died, but we managed to take one captive. I think we need you back in the city. I leave for a couple of days and everything turns to crap. I'll head back to the city and see what I can do. Welcome back to Sivli, sir. Always good to see you alive and well, sir. Where's my replacement? 
He was supposed to report in an hour ago. I can't wait to get back to patrol the promoter. Working the shift is killing me. I've nothing to report, sir. Is a statue of a Sebastian hero, famed for travelling to the Galactic Core on an epic one-way trip to inspire others to defy the Groks. The captain didn't want to be remembered as an individual, but as a Sebastian, his name is never mentioned in history, with records referring to him only as the Traveller. So few aliens have ever actually seen the endangered Sebastians that many of the survivors mistakenly thought the statue was commemorating Noriel Davin, the lone Sebastian of our crew. Whatever the Sebastians had planned for this world, it was short-lived. Repeated disease outbreaks forced them to abandon the entire planet and permanently quarantine it. Has it really been 15 years already? The time flies by so fast when you're stranded on a deserted planet. My back is so sore from sleeping on the ground. Rations are running low, we're willing to start sending out more harvesters. Has anyone seen Navigator Hillock? I really could use a new mattress. I can't believe we've been eating roasted daffles again tonight. My back is so sore from sleeping on the ground. Quinnim, man, am I glad that you're back. We're ambushed by a group of soldiers or something on the road to town. Only three of us survived, but at least we managed to capture one of them alive. Soldiers, it doesn't seem possible. We've been here 15 years and never encountered anyone besides the stranded pirates that shot us down. Are you sure they weren't just another pirate faction? I'm positive. These guys all had new SC-43 robots and trucks. Everything the pirates had was worn out to tech that they salvaged from ships they shot down. These guys are definitely not locals. If they are off-world visitors, they couldn't have been brought by our radio signal. It won't reach a new civilization for another 17 years. Maybe they were here looking for something. I guess we get the chance to ask one of them. Kiat is waiting inside a tent with one with the one that we captured. I'd better head it, head on in then. Tell me how you got to the planet's dirt bag. What is this creature? Is that what I think it is? Two hours. I've been interrogating this creature for two hours and he hasn't so much as grunted. I'm sure glad you're here, Quidem. Maybe you'll have more luck with him than I have. I interrogated hundreds of guys back in my pirating days. Never one. Never had one I couldn't crack. I've already used every psychoactive drug we have on him. None of them seem to work. Hey, are you okay? You look completely drained all of a sudden. I know you said you used to be a mercenary, so you've done this before, right? No, it's nothing. I've done more than my share than my share of interrogations over the years. I just think I've seen one of these creatures before. A long time ago. Well, I've definitely never seen one before. I'll let you get too interrogated then. You want me to shut off that generator? No, leave it running. I don't want any of the kids to hear this. Tell me how you got on the planet, dirtbag. The previously unreceptive creature raises his head as you approach. As you look at his masked face, a sick feeling rises in your stomach. The creature bound in front of you is a Malani. You are caught up in a wave of emotions. First terror, then panic, then stoic hatred. The last Malani was killed nearly a century ago. This evil creature should not exist. The Malani creature remains motionless, even as you reach for the torture tools on the metal table across it. Whatever intentions this creature holds, you are determined to extract them. Hours pass. The Malani never breathes a word or so much as grunts. Gashes, bruises, broken bones and missing teeth barely make the Malani flinch. If it feels pain, it never shows it. Self-control completely escapes you, as you cave into your hatred for the species that both created and enslaved your kind. After hours of torture, the Malani finally slumps over, dead. 
Despite hours of torture, the Malani never so much as breathed a word or felt any pain. Kiati re-enters the tent, his face a combination of disgust and anger. Good god, this is an interrogation. This is a torture suit. We needed him alive, Quinnam. This is personal, wasn't it? What is it that you aren't telling me? This isn't like you at all. I'm sorry, I just lost control. I know what he is. He was a Malani. Everyone thought that they were extinct. They created my species only to use us, use us as slaves. I know all of this sounds crazy. It's a lot to take in, yeah. If that thing really is a Malani, then maybe it was brought back back through cloning. Do you think that they're here looking for you? We've been here for 15 years and nobody has been able to find us. How do these guys track us down? And if they are clones, who is commanding them? Their presence here makes no sense. Well, let's focus on what we know and what we, what we can do now. Answers can come later. We're going to need to up our defences. The navigator also wants to talk to you. He is waiting outside. I'm going to die a single rur. Ruka. Hey, Gwynnum. I lay here, heard all that hammering and banging, and want to know what that uh, shelf you're building is coming. Chalk it up as a failure. The shelf was useless. Well, I hope you made it painful. Those bastards nearly killed my entire patrol. The timing couldn't have been worse either. Quinnum, I'm stepping down as city leader. I want you to replace me. What? Here, look, you can't step down. I was a mercenary once, but I'm no leader. Besides, most of my time I'm busy watching out for Thor and, and Alea. Surely Malayas or Kiati would be a better pick? Malayas may have been third mate on the Benevolence, but he's too weak-willed. Kiati's a former pirate. You've been a real leader ever since we arrived. Also, using the kids as an, as an excuse is pretty lame. Thoen's nearly a grown man, and we all can pitch in and help keep an eye on Alea. Face it, Quinnim. You're the boss now. Good luck. Hey, I came over to see where all those banging sounds were coming from, but Mr. Hillog wouldn't let me go in the tent. He said you're building a shelf. Afraid I'm not anymore, Alea. That shelf, uh, broke. Hey, things are going to start changing around here. They're going to start getting more dangerous. Did the pirates come back? That's why you and Thorin go on patrols, right? To make sure they don't find our home? That's right. But these aren't pirates. These, are, these creatures are worse. These creatures are called the Milani. I thought they were all dead, but I was wrong. We don't know how they got here, but we need to be ready if they find our home someday. Will I get to learn how to use a gun? Will I ever get to go on patrols with you someday? Yes, I suppose you will. For today, though, let's worry about getting you put to bed, huh? 12 more years have gone by. You're in the midst of a prolonged battle of the Malani forces. Talk to an ally Alaya, then take out the enemies in the building through the city's far entrance. Twelve more years have passed since we first encountered the Malani on Vresh. We have now been stranded on this planet for 27 years. We held the upper hand for several years, but have been forced to retreat farther and farther back with each passing year. Now our city is the only area we can control, and it is on the brink of being completely overrun by the Malani's seemingly limitless forces. Quinnim, Quinnim, sorry to wake you up, but we're under attack from the Malani. Again? But they attacked us all night. How how long was I asleep for? Why didn't you wake me up earlier? We wanted to let you sleep for as long as we possibly could. You've been defending the gate for three weeks, Quinnim. You're going to kill yourself if you don't rest more often. I had to wake you up because we're on the verge of being overrun by the Malani's forces. Some of them are trying to get an angle on us by coming in near the entrance. We need to take them out. The sheer amount of soldiers and SC-43s they have to throw at us is unbelievable. The attacks used to just be sporadic. 
But the attacks we've last couple of weeks have been relentless. We can't give up. Whatever the Milani want, they aren't going to get it from us. Now come on, we've got some robots to destroy. Let's get this over with. We're going to start the death in here. The robots we need to take out are in one of those abandoned buildings. We need to link our comms before he before we head in there. Just do whatever I do to get them to synchronize. Fine, but don't expect me to sing or dance. Haha, <laughs> you will if I will. We haven't survived here for all these years, only to die today. If we remain trapped in the city for much longer, we are going to run out of food. I order you to lay down your weapons. Submit or you will be terminated. The building you are in was rocked by a sudden explosion. Head outside and talk to Melise. Then clear a path out of the city for the survivors. Melise, what's the situation? What's going on? Change plan, that's what's going on. They must have brought some heavy artillery, artillery with them. The whole city is about to come down. We need to get everybody out on the front line and prepare to... Quinnan, the city is lost. It's all going to collapse. Our priority now is to get as many people as we can out of here alive. Can you clear a path through the enemies to, to the front gate? If we really have to abandon the city, then yes, I think I can. I suppose it's a better fate than dying in here like animals. Hang on, Melise. We'll get those enemies cleared. The city has fallen to the Milani. Save yourself and escape out the front, the front entrance. Once you're a safe distance away, talk to Alea first and then Kiati. <laughs> Barely made it out of there alive. <laughs> Ah, 
<laughs> so I guess I that's do. it then. I Our home for all these years, you. gone in one day. What would drive those Mars three to do something like this? What have we ever done to deserve this? I... I don't know. I guess we won't ever know. Whatever the Melania are after, and how they got it are questions we've never been able to get answers to. <laughs> are we really the only oh, ones that survived? Everyone knew the fallback point of the city ever fell. Do, do you think my brother made it out? Everything happened so fast, I couldn't find him. There might have been others that survived. I didn't see Thurwin during the final attack, but it doesn't mean he didn't get out of the city before it came down. I really hope he did. He's the only family I ev I've ever had. Well, besides you. I mean, you're not really family, but you're next to the best thing. Uh, whatever. Let's get moving. You got it. You did this, Quinnem. What are you going to give me that look for, Kiati? Do you think that I'm somehow responsible for this? Is that it? They wanted you, Quinnem. That's why they've been pursuing us for the last 12 years, and you know it. You could have ended this before I ever began if you cared about someone besides yourself. Are you really so naive you think someone as ruthless as his Milani would just shake hands on some kind of deal? I've risked my life to protect this group for 27 years, you included. Do you even have any concept of life? For all the time we've been here, you haven't aged a day, while the rest of us are dying off. You know what? Just forget it. We need to keep moving. The Milani are going to be close behind us, and I don't plan on dying today. Lead the way, boss. Save the attitude. We need to focus on figuring out how to survive for the next five uh -huh. years. <laughs> With their spirits shattered and a resentful eye on your back, the survivors of the Benevolence wander off into the deserts of Vresh once again. Rescue has never seemed so far away. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I'll admit, due to, you know, myself recording, I've had to disable the music. I'm sure that would have added a lot to the atmosphere. And it is very possible I missed out some dialogue. So I would highly, highly recommend that you guys try this adventure out for yourself. I'll leave the adventure link into the video description below. Seriously, it is worth it. This is an absolutely fantastic adventure. And judging by the ending there, I feel like there's going to be a sequel. I really really hope so. This is by far, by far, the best adventure I've ever played, with H.R. Matthews ones being a very close second. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode, and more importantly, I hope you enjoyed the adventure itself. And as always guys, I'll see you next time. Take care.